Back to Afyat TV News tonight, and our conversation is centered around the Enugu rerun, the by elections, and the Labour Party candidate fought um, violence in the Ibueze and Udenu constituency. The Independent National Electoral Commission has declared the candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Atigwe Simon, as the winner of the rerun election for the Udenu Ibueze North Federal Constituency of Enugu State. INEC returning officer, Professor Mwachiku J. Obiako from Namdi Azikiwe University, Oka, declared the results of a controversial poll. The election was characterized by missing result sheets. The development resulted in no election in so many polling units. Declaration of the results of the election was done in an undisclosed location where a video was made available to journalists on Sunday, reportedly. Obiaku said that the PDP candidate polled 23,863 votes to defeat Honorable Dennis Abo of the Labour Party, who said was polled a total of 23,226 votes. It will be recalled that voters protested against the election following the replacement of the original result sheets meant for the conduct of the by-elections by the resident electoral commissioner of the independent national electoral commission in the state dr chukwemeka chuku hundreds of supporters of the labor party in the state had on saturday morning protested demanding that the result sheets be provided before the commencement of the election at Robinson Street, Wani, Enugu, for the Enugu South Urban State constituency. And the same situation was the same in Ibueze North, local government area of the state, where the by election for Ibueze North and Udenu Federal constituency was supposed to take place, as voters in Umweida and other communities in Enugu Zike Town insisted that no election would take place in the area without the original result sheets. Well, joining this conversation tonight is Honorable Dennis Namdi Abu, FCA, Labour Party candidate for Ibueze North, Udenu Federal Constituency, and Ferdinand Abugu, Director of Media and Publicity Integrity Campaign Organization. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Can you hear me, Honorable Dennis? Good evening. Welcome to the show. It's good to Thank see you. Thank you. Thank you. Happy for New Year. Me. All right. So let's go straight yeah, to your um, resentment in the just concluded by elections. Tell us about the build up to the elections and of course the election proper. We noted that the Labour Party supporters reportedly protested and they said, according to them, that there were no original result sheets. What, what can you tell us about that? Thank you. And I hope you can hear me very clearly. The very clear. Happy New Year again to you. Um, the build up is that this was a supplementary election in 166 polling units out of 532 polling units. In other words, uh, of the 532 polling units, 366 polling units did not have election. Again, that means that there are intact votes, votes that are kept intact relating to the other 300 and 66 polling units. Among those intact votes, I have 22,670 votes. The PDP candidate has 10,100, which means that I was, I am ahead of him by up to 12,570. What happened on Saturday, which is no election at all, is that they were trying to work to offset that wide margin of lead. Now, which is absolutely impossible. It is like a, a one-year child saying, telling a 10-year-old person that in the next nine years, I will be your age. But in that nine years, the 10-year-old person would have become 19 years. So because I continue to keep at lead of these people. Now, may I say uh, one thing again, just at this point. The, this thing about this election, I have described it as a battle between light and darkness. I take it again. This election, the way I understand it, the way I see it, is a battle between light and darkness. I represent the light, they are of the darkness. 
and when light comes the darkness will always have to take flight now we have left a destination we have left a, a position and we're headed heading somewhere with the politics of Enugu state and with the politics of Enugu North Senatorial Zone and with the politics of our federal constituency. Now that, that journey is irreversible. And the way to reverse it is not by this charade that we experienced on Saturday. So that is the picture, um, you know, the background before the thing occurred on Saturday. I am clearly on the lead. All everything they have tried to do is just um, it's just a disgrace to our society at this particular point in time. Okay, so you're continuously using the word they. May we know who specifically you are referring to, and you refer to yourself as the light and they are the darkness. So who are you talking to in the they here? Um, there are maggots in the apple among the INEC people. They belong in this day. There are certain people who call themselves uh, powerful people, but they are men of feet of clay. They belong in this day. The candidate of the PDP is, is part of this day. And certain uh, uh, miscreants and bad elements among us, you know, who, who, br who bring violence, intimidation, and all manner of uh, um, uh, negative attitudes. To, uh, to politics and election, they belong in this day. People who have become so fixated with the politics of the past, who cannot understand that we, our people have decided to take a journey, and they have left a destination and nothing can bring them back there again. They belong in these people I call the day. All right, so let's come to the studio with me live here is the Director of Media and Publicity, Mr. Ferdinand Abugu. Um, so you were on ground, so you, of course you were an eyewitness. Could you give us an account of what really happened? What happened on Saturday is an eyesore. I was on ground. I was the Labour Party ward coalition agent for my ward, Umozi Ward 2, Igogoro. So during the election, I went to the, as the ward coalition agent, I needed to supervise the election at the various polling booths. And when I, I went to one of the polling booths, Umidoko Hall, 004, I asked the presiding officer about the result sheet. He was about starting accreditation. And he didn't show the voters the result sheet. And I asked, where is the result sheet? Only for him to tell us that uh, the SPO, the supervisory presiding officer, will come with the result sheet later. And I told him that the election will not go on until you show us the result sheet. So I was surprised and he brought out the result sheet when we threatened him that he may not be safe here if he didn't bring out the result sheet because it's our right. The electoral act says that election shouldn't start except the result sheet is displayed to the voters. So when we threatened him, he brought out a pre-written result sheet where the scores have been allocated with PDP having over 539 votes in a polling booth that half of the voters have died. Half of the voters are dead. Yes, that trending video, I was the one that did it. I videoed it myself, and I can stand to defend it anywhere. I interviewed the, the, the presiding officer in details, in details, and he said so many things. He told us that it was the supervisory presiding officer, a woman, Mrs. Sandra, that gave him the result sheet. When we called the, the, the supervisory presiding officer, her phone was switched off. And she didn't even come to the ward. On a normal, this SPO was supposed to be in the ward supervising the election, but she didn't even come. She gave them the result sheets and stayed back at the local government. So I asked him so many things. Even the money they gave him, 50,000 naira, I snapped it. If Nigeria is a working society, they can trace the label of that money, the rap, and they will know who withdrew the money and what it was meant for. Because he told me that I, it was the deputy chairman of Ibois and not local government that shared the money to them. That's the kind of election we had in Ibois and not and within federal constituency. It's an eyesore. I've never seen that, that kind of election all my life because it was so clear that even the resident electoral commissioner is highly, is a member of the PDP. That's very clear. 
it was so clear. Because what was happening has never happened in any electoral process in Nigeria before. By this time, it's supposed to be that the resident electoral commissioner must have been redeployed or even relieved of his uh, job. A situation whereby the REC cannot conduct election in just about 165 polling booths, not a full federal constituency. And in about just eight, state con eight polling booths in the town, he couldn't conduct an election. He sold the result sheet to the PDP and they wrote the results few days to the election. That's treason. If Nigeria is working, he will by now be cooling off in the, in, the, in the prison. You have seen so many videos where a serving DPO was seen snatching ballot box. A DPO of Udenu local government. And up to now, 24 hours or 48 hours after that election, the Nigerian police have not said anything about it. That's the level the society Nigeria is decaying to. We are okay, going so, down with Yeah, so let me, let me um, address some things that you've said because, of course, he that asserts has to prove. Um, you mentioned that the REC in Enugu State um, is a member of the PDP. Can you categorically prove that? How can you say it again that he's not a member? When an election you are supervising, the resources were in the hands of the PDP before the election. What does that say? An alarm was raised and you did nothing. What does that say? Is he not a member of the political party? How did they get the resource sheets? Who gave them the resource sheets? Is he not in his custody? He, is he not the resident electoral commissioner of Enugu State that supervises all the elections? How did it happen? Did Before try, the election. Did, did you try did, to reach Okay, him? now let me tell you something. Okay. Before the election, there were so many insinuations that INEC was compromised. And during one of the stakeholders' meeting, question was asked about the, the, the situation. And they assured us, and at that time, there was an allegation that the head of operations in INEC Enugu, supposed to be in his uh, 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 reti uh, retirement leave, because he's supposed to have a six months leave before he retires by next month. But he was brought back from the leave to supervise this election. Meanwhile, there is somebody that's supposed to head the operations department. But because they said, allegedly, said that he's highly religious, that he may not be able to do the dirty job they wanted to do, they brought back somebody that was already in leave for retirement, to supervise this whole charade they did in Ibois and not and the federal constituency. The problem is that in Nigeria, everything goes. Okay, but so, yeah, okay. So let, hold on on your thoughts, but I'm going to ask this question to the both of you. Um, Honorable Dennis, are you still with us? I'm still with you. All right, so from your observation, what were some of the impediments that INEC had, and were there pre-election instances that you feel may have led to the disenfranchisement of people in that constituency? Okay, uh, INEC had no impediment whatsoever. No impediment whatsoever. Don't forget that this, this was an isolated election. INEC had conducted elections in the general election in 17 local governments. Now they were conducting elections in three. So, and assurances were given to us, and that assurance has not been refuted even till now. Beavers machines were provided, backups were provided, and so on and so forth. So there is no impediment, no, there's nothing. Logistic, financial, whatever, don't forget, the people in the National Assembly, they were, we have already provided sufficient funding for this election. So that's nothing that took them unawares, nothing, no impediment occurred. It was just deliberate human, um, human uh, calculation. That's nothing, that, that's no impediment. There was no impediment at all. No impediment whatsoever. They just did it deliberately. That was how they chose to do it. And it is just a shame. But uh, we sit back and we're watching and we'll see how this uh, this thing will play out. Okay, just before I, I take your, your take on that, Mr. Ferdinand, um, if we can have some of the videos, yeah, from the production team, if we have the videos now, maybe we can play them back. <laughs> 
Ronaldo, who would that? Where are you from? You go to Look at the Who gave you? Which who gave you? I next gave you this result. I told you to come and do it here. Yeah? Already written results. This is the presiding officer in Igogoro, Ozi War 2. Who me the color of 004? Who me the color of Already written results. And the election have not started. This is it. This is the presiding officer from Igwe City. He's the one that is masterminding this. This is this is the fraud that is happening in Igwe Zenot. What is your name? What is your name? What is your name? Ronald Ugu. Ugu da. Where are you from? Igwe City. You are from Igwe City. Who gave you this result? Local government. Who gave you? Which who gave you? I next gave you this result. I told you to come and do it here. Yeah? Already written results. This is the presiding officer. Yes. That is that is yeah. That is DPO. That is DPO. That is DPO. Carry now material. 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 Okay, so we see the video and we apologize for the quality. Of course, um, that was a, um, um, a video not taken by Afia TV itself. But of course, we got that report for Afia TV. So um, we've seen the video here and um, we, we probably, that was your voice at the background, you know, talking to that man. Can you identify the, the police DPO who was in that video? He's the DPO of Udeno local government. And do you know his name? No, but I know him first, officially. Okay. All right. So let's speak to you, um, Honorable Dennis. And I'm sure you've probably also seen that video. What will your reaction be to that? And also with the announcement of um, Atigwe Simon as the winner, what are your plans? Would you be contesting the declared results in court? <laughs> Those results, will, the, the contest will be, um, it will handle itself. It's going to go on autopilot. It's just like I described this people, they are men with the feet of clay. All what they have done, it cannot stand the test of any kind of test at all. So I'm just going to watch the team roll and then they will see the outcome. I'm just going to watch it. But you, you will be here with us um, as the time goes on and you see how this matter is going to play out. It's going to be on autopilot. All right, so let me ask you, after the, uh, the aftermath of this violence that you know, took place in Ibweze, North and, um, of course, Udenu, I'd like to know what are the steps that you have taken so far to get this to the relevant authorities? Also, what's your relationship with Governor Peter Mba? What does it look like? Yeah, you know, the... I, I don't know. I don't know the... I don't want to think that the governor has a hand in this, you know, because in all of what has been playing out, I have not seen uh, any indication as to his own input into it. Um, I got assurances from the governor that the election will be free and fair, and that he's going to create an enabling environment for that to happen. Now, it will, it will be shocking to me if he has a hand in this. But there are some other people who also think 
that they are powerful elements. I am not referring to the governor, but there are people who in Enugu there, they think that they have, they are powerful people, but the power I know, the power I recognize is the power that comes from the people. When that the people are behind you, then you, as a politician, you can say you are a powerful politician. If you think it is to come out and try to impose your will on the people, you are a man with the feet of clay. You are just a person taking a walk in the garden. When the people are not with you, you are just fooling yourself. If you think that this is how it, uh, politics is played. All right, so we want to thank you. You have something to add to that before we go. Yes, let me just say something. It's like an advice to... Hello? We can hear you, sir. It's like an advice to Independence National Electoral Commission. I think it's time for them to regain their, rebuild their image. Their image is so battered. And if they continue this way, they are risking the lives of their ad hoc workers. Because if Nigerians wait for them to do the right thing and they can't do it, they may re de decide to take the laws into their hands. And the people that will suffer are the same, the people that are suffering in the society, who, which are the adult staff. Just see what happened to that man. He's not an adult staff, he's just an adult staff. And can you imagine what was paid to him? He just 50,000 naira. What if they killed him there? INEC, as usual, will come out and say it's a fake news and deny it. Meanwhile, INEC staffs are in their offices. They are risking the lives of young people in Nigeria. Let them do the right thing. This election that happened, nobody, even the, the candidate of Labour Party, don't need to even send a petition or even talk about it before INEC will cancel the election. Because in its face value is a shared. So I just pray and beg INEC to change. The wreck here, if Nigeria is working, supposed to be, be sacked immediately. Immediately. An isolated election in two constituencies in Enugu State, he did this. And still people are still talking about it. And no measure have been taken to punish the, 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 the system, the people in the in, in INEC that carried out this, this crime against humanity. So... All right, let's get your final words, Honorable um, Dennis, just before we wrap up. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, can we get your final Hello? words just before we wrap up? Can you hear me? Okay, my final word yes. is this. Um, I think we have had enough of trust deficits from our revered institutions in this country, including INEC. I think by now, all of us, uh, men of goodwill, we should be on a journey to try to improve on the image of our critical institutions. This way, and this thing that happened in the North last Saturday is not the way to go. It is the time to sacrifice selfish pecuniary in interests to serve the greater good of the populace, the, so that we can begin to heal, so that we begin to move forward. This is not the way to go at all. And everybody needs to be advised like that. We want to thank you. Thank for, you very much. All right. Thank you for sharing your thoughts and experiences with us, Honorable Dennis Nandi Abu, Labour Party candidate for Ibueze North and Idenu Federal Constituency and the director of media campaign, Ferdinand Abugo. Thank you so much, gentlemen, you. for sharing with us tonight. Thank you so much.